Okay, I'm going to do a tutorial over several basic things with uh, how to paint in Photoshop. Uh, I noticed a lot of people were asking how to, you know, do blending or get nice straight lines and whatnot in Photoshop. So I decided I'll make a simple tutorial over this. So let's make a new file. I'll just press Control N. So in here, Control N and poof. I can just say I'm going to create one. I'll just use uh, US paper. It's always recommended to paint at 300 pixels per inch. That way, whenever you print, it'll be nice and sharp. With this, you have your ruler up here if you want to use it or not. Uh, I'll just turn it off right now, so Control R, that's off for now. And I'm going to press Control 0 to basically see my canvas at full resolution. I'm going to add a new layer. You can either press this little button down here, or I just press Control Shift N, new layer pops up. OK. And this is the paintbrush I'm using right now. I'm using uh, Wacom Intuos 2 right now. And if I just use this and scribble around, you can see that I can get thick and thin lines. Um, you can change all these settings. If you press F5, you should have all your brush presets. This will allow you to change the way your brush works. I always recommend smoothing. With this off, you might sometimes have angular lines when you're drawing. So keep this on right here. With uh, Shape Dynamics, I'm using Pen Tilt. This means based on my tilt of my pen, it will either become thick or thinner. And under Other Dynamics, I have a Pen Pressure. That will control how much opacity is being shown. If I turn this off, you'll notice it's completely black. Turn this on, now it goes to fade to white. Shape dynamics, thick and thin. So if I turn these both off, it's a solid line when I draw. Turn this on, thick, thin. And this on, thick, thin, and fading away. So it works a little bit more like a pencil. Um, so I can generally have both of those on. Just press Control A right now, delete, Control D to deselect, and brush tip shape. If you have your spacing down to nothing, this will keep it so that it doesn't uh, so it doesn't look kind of spotty sometimes. Because technically a line in Photoshop is a bunch of um, of these alpha maps all tiled together. So for example, I have a dot. If I uh, spread this open, you'll see there's a bunch of little tiny dots. So you can actually draw and you have little spotty dots all around. And if I use this and I make the spacing really far, you can see the same alpha being uh, tiled all over the place. Uh, so I'm just turning that off. Um, so here you go, using three. I can draw my lines. It's almost like a pencil at this point. I recommend practicing so you can draw lines perfectly with one fell swoop. Instead of having to go over all the time, it gets all kind of sketchy, kind of like when you're drawing in real life. And for some people, they have trouble um, drawing exactly at 100%, so you can always zoom in a little bit. This is 200%, and you can make your brush smaller, even smaller down at 2. But I recommend 3 because it gives you a really nice variation between thick and thins. Whereas 2, it's not, it doesn't vary as much. So, here we go. Let's say, for example, I want to, I don't know, draw an eye or something. I always recommend drawing the basic shapes first. So, for example, I'm going to draw something like this and say, okay, this is the basic shape of the eye. And uh, here's the brow or something. Just have that out. Okay. So just having these basic shapes will help you a lot when you're drawing everything else. Um, I'm going to say the lashes are going to be somewhere around here. It goes over here have that, tear dot, whatnot. So we generally shading down here and shading over here. These are basic guidelines that help me know what I'm doing when I'm going to draw the final version. Um, I might have it so it's a double lid person, kind of like that. Now I just take my opacity bring it down just slightly. So I'm going to create a new layer. I can just lock this right here so I don't accidentally paint on it anymore. On this layer now, I do a simple scribble first, Control A and Delete. The reason for that is, in case you press Undo, you don't jump back to your previous layer down here. Um, because it always brings you back to your previous one, so if I had no stroke, and I was drawing, press Control Z, it'll go back down here. And we're using Photoshop, I recommend you using Control Alt Z, which allows you to go back in history. Control Z is actually a toggle between Undo and Redo, so that's kind of annoying. So with this basic under uh, under drawing here, you can actually go through and really finalize everything. So I'm bringing it down to two at this point. I'm just using my brackets to go up and down. 
Another way to do it in Photoshop CS4 is, let's say, for example, uh, I hold uh, Shift and right mouse click, I believe it is. I can't remember anymore. I don't really use this technique that much. Uh, it's either right mouse or left mouse button, one of those. I'll uh, forget it. I can't remember it. Anyways, I'll just draw normally. The other thing is if you hold Alt down, it changes to a little eye drop tool. It allows you to dab colors very quickly. So with this, I'll just draw some basic stuff here. Okay. We go on top of the eyelid. It goes down right here. So a general trick I always tell people is you don't always have to draw all the lines. Sometimes hinting upon it works a lot better than actually drawing every one of it. And the easiest way to do lashes up here and just make it kind of dark on the top. Just make it completely dark. It helps a lot. And at this point, you can just kind of draw out the lashes inside. Bring this down slightly. And pull all these out one by one. It would have been easier if I drew this picture a little bit bigger, but oh well. These are kind of small at this point. Yes, I do draw every individual lash. It just always looks a lot better that way. And go back and just kind of fill it in a bit more. Okay, down here, just kind of shade this part down here. You don't always have to draw all of that. You might want to shade down here a bit to kind of hit this detail down here. So obviously, this is a bit more stylized than I usually go. But, let me still get the same effect, generally. Darken this area. Darken that. I mean, don't don't be scared to try out you know different things that might give you a pretty cool look. When you get around here, uh, draw little lashes down here too. It adds a lot of realism to your piece. Uh, typically, the end lashes are a bit longer, so you can go crazy with that if you want. I recommend never using the smudge tool. It's like gross. It is a in fact, taboo to use that in the, the professional industry when you're doing digital painting and whatnot. They uh, really shun it. And I'll show you how to blend a bit later. You can see this? Get some of that. Darken that area right there. And some of this. So you have some of that going. And we draw the eye. Let's have the eye looking over here or something. So, kind of hint the uh, shape of it real quick. And there we go. I always recommend drawing the people, little people right here. Get that in. Fill that. Fill the top. Fill the tops over here. Makes it pretty simple. Remember, um, the way the iris is, they always have little kind of spikes coming out from the center. Kind of like that. It's a bit dark on the top. Shade it in a bit. This part comes in slightly too. And then you can really make it a bit darker up here. There you go. If you want the little sparkles in the eyes like the you know, reflection like there's a window or something, I'm just pressing X to go back to white. And just draw in the parts where you think it might be white. And that adds a lot of, to the character.